Hey, it's a beautiful day at Maurice Goddard State Park in one of the seldom visited trails at Goddard and in western Pennsylvania is the Falling Run Nature Trail. And what I would like to do today is to take you on a short, old-fashioned nature walk, the type of walk that parents used to take their children on and naturalists would take groups of visitors on. You're my visitor on today's nature walk. Now we're not going to go into a lot of detail on all the marvelous plants and animals that are out here, but we will talk about a number of them along the way. And I want to encourage you to come and walk this beautiful trail. There's waterfalls on the trail, diverse habitat. It's really cool. It takes about an hour and it's an hour worth spent especially with your family. Bring a little picnic. Picnic at Goddard State Park and you'll love it. Are you ready to begin? First off, I want to make sure you know about this plant up here. It has three leaves. Kohuntas. The native Indians that were in this area, the Delaware Indians, they would call this the stick that hurts. If we remember, it has three leaves, it has white berries in the fall, and it has a hairy stem as it gets older. So if we remember, leaves are three, let it be. Berries white, flee in fright. And if the stem is hairy, it's mighty scary. Not to confuse it with the plant that's grown right over here that has five leaves, and we've covered that on past programs, past videos, and this is Virginia Creeper. You can touch it all day long and not have any problem at all. Hey, let's get down the trail and see what we find. It's amazing. It's amazing how God puts things out there for us that are good and sometimes they're close to the evil well this plant right here and I'm gonna just snip it off for educational reasons this plant right here is so succulent when I say succulent it means there's a lot of fluid in it and if you were to get poison ivy you would use this plant called jewel weed to get rid of the poison ivy. You crush up the plant, you get it all good and juicy, and you rub that on the poison ivy. Do that two, three times a day for two or three days, and it will dry up the poison ivy, get rid of the, the itch and the problems with it, and you'll be ready to go on your next walk. It's free. Some places charge for soaps and creams that have that ingredient in it. That's called jewel weed or spotted touch me not. Let's get down the trail and see what else we have. What do we have ahead of us here? It's a historic site. Let's take a peek inside. Look right down here. There's water flowing through this foundation. If you come inside, you can see there's water flowing all through this structure. Let me tell you what it is. It's an old spring house. 
there's a natural spring right here. You can see the water. And there would be complete walls on this. There would be a roof on it. And back in the day when it was used, there would be milk in here and cheese in here and all the goodies that a family, a pioneer family, would need to survive. This was their refrigerator. Well, over the years, of course, the roof has collapsed in. But the spring is still here. And it still has the potential. And the water temperature stays in the low 50 degrees year-round. It's a great way to have refrigeration when you're back in a time we didn't have electricity. Some plants only grow in springs, such as watercress. And we do, down in along the stream here, we have watercress growing natural watercress which you can eat of course the jewelweed plant to cure for poison ivy oh it grows all along this stream and this is where life actually starts for this forest this stream not only gives water to the beautiful canopy of trees the wildflowers and the wildlife but little creatures called macroinvertebrates live in here. They spend most of their life cycle in the water, underneath the water, eating plant material and other items. And then when it's time for them to mature, they come out of the water, most get wings, and they fly. And they're flying around looking for a boyfriend or girlfriend to mate so they can have an additional generation. They'll lay their eggs in the water, the whole cycle of life begins. That's what this forest is, is a cycle of life. The spring house is man's part of the cycle of life and how they survived in what was once the western Pennsylvania wilderness. Let's go on the trail and see what else we have. Now as you're walking this trail, you gotta watch your step. It's not paved. That's one reason I carry a walking stick. And also, I can point out plants and move plants out of the way. So let's go up and see what we have. Oh, something that's really disappointing to me is we have a couple of invasive plants that have come into this natural area. And one is right here. And you see it's starting to get like a little berry on it or fruit. Well, actually, this plant is Maltiflora rose. And it's a rose that we see. It bloomed about a month ago. And right now, it's right at the end of June. It bloomed about a month ago. It has a white flower and it will uh, get a berry. But the problem is it's taken over vast areas. And the problem with people and animals is this plant has big old thorns on it. If you walk through that, you'll get torn to shreds. Right across the trail is another plant we have right here. Now this plant also is an invader but it's one that you can eat. And this plant is called garlic mustard. Now it's starting to die back. It's very prolific in the early spring and it, you'll see it everywhere with all of its flowers. But what happens is the garlic mustard comes in, comes into an area and it actually outcompetes the native plants. One problem is it's having a major impact on one of our butterflies. The butterfly is the West Virginia white. West Virginia white only eats the leaves of plants from the mustard family. Well, lo and behold, garlic mustard is in the mustard family. Native mustards, 
they feed the, 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 uh, the white no problem at all. But it seems that the garlic mustard has something in it that inhibits the Virginia white from reproducing. And it's killing and could make extinct West Virginia white butterfly. So that's one reason we don't want invasives in our environment. But let's go see what natural plants we have. As we walk along the trails, mostly all over the country, trails will be marked with paint signs. And if you follow the color of the paint, you should be able to follow the trail. The maps that you have in the state parks, state forests, national parks, forest service lands will have all the trails marked with the paint color that represents that trail. That way it keeps you from getting lost. And you don't have to worry about taking a GPS, but always a good idea to bring a GPS if you do have one. Again, the trail marking. Keep us right on track of where we're going. My camera person was looking up and trying to see all the trees and the sun shining through the trees. If we look ahead, you'll see evidence of what happened in the past. A windstorm came through this part of the forest and that tree was weak and it actually snapped it right over. Now that tree probably is going to completely die. But the good part is it will revert back into the soil and the cycle of life will continue again. Let's continue on. I do want to talk about this tree. This tree looks like somebody took Kellogg's Corn Flakes, stuck them in the oven, burned them, burned them pretty bad. Then they brought them out and they glued them onto a tree. It looks like the Kellogg's Corn Flake tree. But what that is, is representative of the black cherry the wild black cherry tree. Oftentimes considered the most valuable tree for timber in Western Pennsylvania and throughout Pennsylvania. 
interesting thing about this cherry is it does get small little cherries, not the Bing cherries that we put in our drinks, but very small cherries. They can be gathered, very labor intensive to do that. But wildlife just loves the cherries. This provides food for countless songbirds, countless animals, little mice that are on the ground, a variety of animals survive on this tree. But one thing I want to warn you about is getting to be around the 4th of July. And during the summer months, we love having roasted marshmallows and roasted hot dogs over an open fire. Sometimes we don't have a metal hot dog stick and we go out and we see a tree and we cut off one of its branches and we sharpen that stick up and we use that. Well, I'll tell you this, you don't want to use the stick from a black cherry. Reason being, the tree has cyanide in it. Even those little berries, the seeds have minute amounts of cyanide in it, and the stick does. We're much better off if you have to carve a stick out of wood to use an oak or a maple. It's a lot healthier. Not that one, one use of one stick would kill you, but it might upset your stomach. Either that or the pound of chocolate and the pound of marshmallows together. Maybe that's what makes your stomach upset, but I don't recommend it.